from Davenport, Iowa. Here's our interview. Governor, welcome back to Fox News Sunday. Uh, I want to get to policy, but let's start with what you got to get through, the roadmap to get you to the place where you can set policy. We've got a new poll out this morning from the Des Moines Register that has you in third place. Where do you need to finish on Monday? What's your internal assessment of what you need to have going into New Hampshire to consider this a success, to keep you viable for voters, donors, those who you want to support you moving forward? Well, well we, we've got a great path going forward. Uh, we're going to do well on Monday. We've got an unbelievable organization. We've got uh, large numbers of Iowans that have committed to caucus for us that are going to show up. You know, they, they just kind of roll their eyes at these polls because the idea that you're going to be able to poll a caucus, much less a caucus in negative 20, uh, good luck doing that. And so we've worked very hard over the last six months uh, to go to all 99 counties, to build the organization, to get people uh, at their doors uh, committed. Uh, and so we're looking forward to it. We've done it the right way. Um, and historically, when you have the energy on the ground, which we do, when you've gone to all 99 counties, when you have the organization, you know, that's what you need to do to do well in a caucus, but particularly uh, in these conditions, because there's going to be every excuse in the world for someone to say, you know what, maybe I'm not going. Our folks are motivated. They're going. They're on a mission. We've got people, Shannon, from all over the country that have come to in the middle of a blizzard to Iowa just to make phone calls for us, to knock on doors and tell Iowans why they want to see me be the Republican candidate, the next president. Uh, and so what's on the ground is special for us, and we're going to bring it all the way in for Monday. It's going to be good. Tuesday, we're going to be in both South Carolina and New Hampshire. And then, of course, the balance of the week in New Hampshire, we have a debate scheduled on Thursday. I don't know if anyone else has accepted the debate, uh, but I've accepted it. Do you need to finish second here in Iowa? We're going to do well. Uh, I, and I think, look, I, I, um, I appreciate being the underdog. I like how people have tried to say, oh, uh, what? So, so I do better in those situations. And I think I have a record of, of doing well um, as the underdog. But, but we're going to do well. Um, and we look forward to going to the next contest. I mean, you know, obviously, New Hampshire has 20 delegates. Um, Iowa has 40. South Carolina is a big deal. Nevada has a caucus. I'm participating. Donald Trump's participating. Nikki Haley's not even participating participating in that show. She'll win zero delegates in Nevada. I, the whole name of this game is to win a majority of the delegates. Uh, so we're competing for every delegate we can. Okay, let's talk about the border. It's something you've been involved with, obviously, as the governor of Florida, and it's something that you would have to immediately start addressing as president of the United States. In Texas, the governor there has now got National Guardsmen um, blocking U.S. Border Patrol agents from stretches of the Rio Grande. Texas Governor Abbott has said this. Texas has the legal authority to control ingress and egress into any geographic location in the state. Overnight, there was word that three people reportedly drowned there, and the federal authorities say they were blocked from state officials from helping. Texas authorities say it happened on the Mexican side of the river. They did go out to look and assist. They didn't see anybody in trouble, but it exacerbates and highlights tensions there at the border. Would you, as president, would you, as governor, have put National Guardsmen and women now in this place where they're at odds with federal Border Patrol agents? Well, I've already done it. We've supported Texas to the hilt. Uh, I think they have every right to defend their their border. But here's the great thing about about this with me being president, Shannon. It's not going to be an issue because I am going to empower states and localities to enforce federal immigration law. We have this crazy thing where somehow the federal government says it's their sole province to enforce immigration law under the supremacy clause of the Constitution, yet they say states can't enforce it and be faithful to the law because the federal government doesn't want to enforce the law. It makes no sense. We're going to have all hands on deck. I've worked with border sheriffs just as governor of Florida in places like Arizona and Texas. Their communities are getting overrun. The state of Texas. So uh, all states and localities will be empowered to enforce federal immigration law. That includes at the border, but it also includes in the interior of our country. Uh, if you have criminal aliens, uh, state and local need to be working with federal so that we can deport the people. Uh, we need to work to make sure we're deporting illegal aliens, particularly the 8 million that have come in under Biden. So we're going to be working together. We're going to hold sanctuary states and sanctuary cities accountable. We're not going to let them thumb their nose at immigration law. But all Texas is trying to do is to be faithful to the law while Joe Biden is not enforcing the law. 
Well, Governor, you know that the Supreme Court, when Arizona considered this years ago, did know that the feds have supremacy when it comes to immigration issues. And I know that there's going to be some back and forth. Maybe this ends up back there at the Supreme Court. But they've been clear on that. In the meantime, on the border issue, you were critical yesterday. You said you're sick of Republicans. You see what they're doing right now in Washington, but the senators doing some border agreement, which is basically caving on everything to the Democrats. We've talked to the negotiators, Senator Lankford and others, about what's going on. They don't have text yet, so we don't have the contours of this. This. What's your criticism of what we do know about what's coming together and how in the world would you as president put together something that could pass this Senate and also the House, which has a very different vision and a very small GOP majority for getting something done on the border? Well, first, you're right about Arizona versus U.S. I think this current court would, would absolutely reevaluate that. Uh, and I think it would also be a different posture because the federal government, we wouldn't be suing a state. We would be supporting the state. Uh, now, on this, uh, you know, I got the details. I think it was on a, on a Fox report where they're going to give work permits for illegal aliens. Uh, they're greenlighting more, uh, an increase in, in immigration under some of these things. And it's like, wait a minute. We've had 8 million people come illegally. Uh, I've, I've been traveling around to these early states, uh, Shannon. I've done town halls. I've taken questions uh, day after day. I've not had one voter, Republican voter, tell me that that is the type of thing that they want to see. They want to see the border taken care of. And yes, there's certain things that you want to work with Congress on. A lot of what can be done can be done through the executive branch with somebody that wants to be faithful uh, to executing on the border. But to do a, a quasi amnesty to essentially green light pretty much large numbers of people coming in as if that's going to be something we're just going to accept, uh, putting more money in to process illegal aliens, that is not the way you're going to stop this border crisis. All right, as we are just hours away now from getting to the actual first votes in this primary caucus season, in hindsight, is there anything you would change about the way that you launched or that you've run your campaign to this point? I'll tell you, we've worked harder than anybody. I think if you look at what we've done, you know, just look over the last couple couple months. I mean, we've been everywhere doing town halls um, in the early states, uh, getting endorsed by people like Governor Reynolds, winning these debates, not just in the Republicans, but even against a Democrat like Gavin Newsom. Uh, so, so we've been working hard. We've been doing a great job. I think uh, Monday is going to be the pivot point where now that people start to actually vote, um, I think it's going to really uh, uh, help uh, change the landscape in terms of some of the narratives that have been there. Uh, but there's not been a candidate that's worked harder. There's not been a candidate that's put in more work. And I think particularly here here in Iowa, uh, Iowans notice that. Iowans care about it. You're not entitled to be nominated. You don't just swoop in and get coronated. You got to earn it. And we've earned it. Well, stay warm. We'll see you out there over the next 24 hours as this uh, finally gets to the votes. Governor, thank you. Th thank you. Snow, wind, and sub-zero temperatures threaten to freeze turnout in tomorrow night's caucuses. We're going to bring in our Sunday panel. Uh